Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem check mo check if move is legal and this is a problem from this morning's leak code contest. So let's get into it. And if you'd like to see a solution from this uh, night's leak code contest, subscribe and stay tuned for more. I promise this time I'll stop being lazy and actually solve those problems. So let's get into it. We are given a zero indexed eight by eight grid board but the dimensions actually aren't too important in this problem, but each board cell could have three potential values. It could be an empty cell, or it could be the color white, or it could be the color black. So three possible values. And our job is we are given a single move and we just wanna determine is that move legal? Now, how do you know if a move is legal? Only if changing that cell, the one cell that we're changing, if it happens to be that it causes the, it, it basically this cell is part of the endpoint of a good line. Now, what exactly is a good line? Well, let's read the next paragraph. A good line is a line of three or more cells including the endpoints, where the endpoints of the line are one color and every other cell in between these two endpoints is the opposite color. So they can't be empty. None of these cells in this line can be empty. So these are some examples of some good lines. So these four are examples of good lines. This is not a good line. Why is this a good line? Well, it has three cells, right? We need three or more cells. So it has three or more cells. The endpoints of this line are white, right? The two endpoints endpoints the the you know the, the endpoints basically i think it's obvious they're white the every other cell in between those endpoints is black right so that's a good line this is a good line as well the endpoints of this are black every other cell in between is white and this has four cells that's that's three or more cells so that counts as well why is this not a good line well it has five cells that's good but the endpoints are opposite colors right this is white this is black that can't be the case so this is not a good line now, it can't just be in four directions, right? Up, down, left, and right. Those are four directions, but we can also have diagonal lines, right? So this, these diagonal lines are also good lines. So I think the the general understanding of this problem, it takes a little while to get, but once you get it, it's pretty straightforward. But the question is, how can you actually implement this into code? And that's what I'm going to be showing you right now. So let's take a look at an example, and then I think the solution will become pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at this grid. The blue stuff are just empty cells. We have some white cells and we have some black cells. We are given this move that we want to complete stated right here. So in row four, column three, so this is row four, and the column three is going to be right over here. And what we want to do is just change the color to black, right? You can see right now the color is blue, but we wanna change it to black. So let's change that to black right now. So now we want to know, the question is, is this point that we just added, is it the end point of a good line? We're not just asking, is this is this point, a is it a part of a good line? That's not the question we're asking. We're asking, is this the end point of a good line? So how are we going to check if it's the end point of a good line? Well, that comes into the directions that we can search, right? Remember what I said at the beginning? It's not just four directions, but it could be diagonal as well. So technically we have to go in eight different directions, right? Suppose this was the end point of a of a line such as this one, right? It would This would be the endpoint at the bottom position. So in that case, we have to search up, right? We have to search up to see that if this is the endpoint, okay, so we know that this is black, we're gonna keep searching up and see if we can find a good line that uh, goes in that direction. We can also search to the right. It could possibly be a good uh, endpoint of a good line in this position or like this or like this or even diagonally, right? We have to check eight different directions. Now, what's going to be the time complexity? Well, if we search in eight different directions, we're not going to be revisiting the same cell twice, probably. So the overall time complexity is going to be, you know, something like proportional to the size of the grid, but it's an eight by eight grid. So the technical time complexity, I think, is O of one. But if you extend this problem to a generic case, it could be considered O of N as well. 
So let's just take it one single example line. So suppose we started here, right? This is where we changed this to black, right? Something like over here. And then we wanna know, okay, searching to the right, is this the endpoint of a good line? Well, we're gonna go at the next possible cell, right? The next possible cell has to be a different color than this one, right? So the fact that this is a white is good for us, right? Because if it was a black, that would mean that we'd have two blacks right next to each other. That's definitely not a good line right so then we go to the next cell it's also white so we continue and then we get to a black anytime we get to the same color that we started at over here that means we're done right because we know that the endpoints have to be the same color so these two are the endpoints and everything in between happened to be white so that's good the length of this is four right so we did find a sufficiently you know good line or whatever these two are endpoints of that good line now if we ever reached while we were searching right we know we stopped as soon as we get to a black if we ever reached an empty cell in between we got to our first black that would mean we did not have a good line and then in that case we'd have to return false we did not find a good line so this is the general overview now let me get into the code it's actually not as hard to write as you would expect so let's get into that Okay, so now let's jump into the code. You can see I already wrote a little bit of boilerplate. So what I did first is I took the dimensions of the board. So the number of rows and the number of columns, but I guess now that I realize it's just eight, let's just leave this as it is because I'm lazy, but uh, the directions, the reason I have this array is basically so that we can kind of automate. And this is the kind of key part of this algorithm to at least not have to, you know, write a ton of code. So if we have, we know that we have eight directions that we're going to be searching in, right? So basically, I just wrote the the you know change in direction. So if we wanted to search in one direction, uh, this would be that direction. Basically, this first call, this first row here is the four directions: right, left, right up down this next row are the diagonal dimensions right like something like top right uh, bottom left etc uh, etc et right so what we want to do is we want to search all eight directions but we don't want to have to write the code eight different times so let's write a helper function legal to check if starting at this position row column uh, and changing the color to this particular color change and going in this particular direction we have one of eight directions to choose from and we want to know did is that a legal move if any of the eight directions cr creates a legal move right then we return true but if none of them does, then we have to return false. And one other thing, so you can see in the input, we are given the row column and we're given the color. So let's just go ahead and do that. Like let's change this position to this particular color that we were given. So next let's finish up this helper function. So we were given a direction, right? That represents a, a, chain, a DR and DC. What I mean by DR and DC is the direction that we're gonna go in the row direction and the direction in the column direction. Basically the, the difference or the change in row and the change in column. So those are what we're given and we can actually make that update right now. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna basically say, okay, this is the starting position row column and we're gonna update just once. So we're gonna say row plus DR and column plus DC. So far, uh, we're going to say our length is one of our line so far. So you can see that we incremented once already. So we skipped the first position because we already know what color it is that was given in the input. We just changed it. So we have a length. We have a line of length one so far. So now we want to keep going while we are still in bounds of the grid. So how do we check if we're in bounds? Well, the good thing in Python is it's uh, a little bit easier than I think some other languages. So we can do it with a single inequality to check that the row is in bounds. So we we want to know that the row is greater than or equal to zero and it has to be less than the number of rows which i think is eight but i have a variable for that anyway so let's continue and we want to make sure that the column is in bounds so we can do that with a single inequality in python which is pretty convenient if you ask me uh, that's it so we're checking we're making sure that we're in bounds so as long as we're in bounds what do we want to know well, if we're in bounds, we can go ahead and increment our length by one. That means we found another uh, position that is in bounds. So let's increment the length by one. But so now what now? Okay, we got to a new position in the board, right? Well, what color is it? Or maybe it's not even any color. If it's not any color at all, uh, we know that because we can check that the row column is equal to a dot, right? That's what represents empty in our case. So it's, if it's equal to a dot, what did we say happens if we get to an empty cell? Well, that means we kind of just broke our line, right? We, we found an invalid position, right? That's not a good line, right? We found an invalid position before we found the two endpoints that we were looking for so what are we gonna have to do in this case we're simply gonna return false 
right? So we can do that over here. And the other thing is, the other uh, end case, basically, what I mentioned is if we find the original color that we started at, right? How do we know if we found the original color that we started at? Well, uh, similarly, in this case, we can check the position that we're currently at row column if it's equal to what if it's equal to the original color right that was what was given to us with a variable right the original color and where the first position we skipped right when we when we started at the first position row column then we incremented it by once so this is not necessarily going to execute you know on the first iteration of the loop right so because we skipped the first cell so if we find the same color again that's when we stop now it, it, it could be that just because we found the same color doesn't mean mean this is a a good line it could be a good line or it could be a, you're not a good line how do we know if it's a good line well it has to be at least length three so let's return true if this is greater than or equal to three if it's less than or equal to three then we return false so we can do that with an inequality like this we'll just return the result of this inequality now we checked the case if it was empty we checked the case if it was the same color what if it's a different color well we don't really have to do anything in that case right because if we start with a black for example right we start with a black then we get to a white then we get to a white then we get to a white like we could go on go like this forever it doesn't matter any whites are just basically ignored if we started with a black and then once we get back to the back to the end point right we get to, the, to another black that's when we reach the same one that we started with at the beginning and then we'll basically check this inequality is the length of the entire thing greater than or equal to three yes it is we return true right or maybe we never saw any whites at all maybe we just got a starting black and then we got an ending black what are we going to do in that case we're going to say okay the length is not greater than or equal to three we return false so that's the basic logic in this case now, every iteration of the loop, we do have to update our row and column positions, moving them in the direction that we specified. So we'll say row plus dr, column plus d column. And so this is like our terminal case, but if we exit the entire loop and we never found a good line, then we have to return false in this case, right? So now we have our entire helper function. It's not quite as hard as you would have thought, maybe. Uh, it's definitely some uh, a solid amount of code. Maybe some people know how to shorten this up. Uh, I look forward to seeing how you guys can do that. But this kind of direction really is what makes this problem simple for us because now all we have to do is just go through for D in direction, the eight different directions we have. We just have to go through each and then call our helper function legal, passing in the starting row position, starting column, which was given to us as input parameters, row move, column move, and the color that we're changing it to, color and Last but not least, the particular direction we're going in with, which is just D in this case, right? So that, this is how we're going to call the helper function. We're going to do it eight times, one for each direction. If we ever return true, like even a single time, if this is true, then we can return true in the entire function. But if it never returns true, then the loop will exit and then we'll have to return false out here. And as you can see, this is the entire code. And you can see that I just ran it and it just gave me accepted on the contest. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And check out my Patreon if you would like to further support the channel. Link will be in the description. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.